Hey friends, I am coming to you from the Walmart parking lot and this is the front lines of a sleep robotic drone America where people come and lose their dreams, lose sight of who they are, come in their pajamas, you know, whatever, to buy their discount junk and necessities and I'm coming to you today to talk about embodiment versus transcendence and also the necessity to be in this world to not try and escape the the elements of being in a human body right now, the reality of being in a human body right now, and being amongst, immersed in this sea of social programming and storylines about who we should be, who we can be, what's right, what's wrong, what's good, what's bad. So, you know, this is coming from someone who tried to escape. <laughs> All of this, you know, in many different ways. Um, one was by moving to Hawaii, you know, trying to find this this paradise, this lost paradise, and a more conscious community. And yeah, there is some of that there. And traveling the world, seeking this, spending time in ashrams and monasteries, and really trying to transcend the difficulties of being in a human body and trying to find fulfillment. Um, seeking a lot of that external, so seeking a teacher, seeking teaching, seeking a body of knowledge or wisdom that I could grasp onto and label truth and, you know, fill myself with. And also trying to kind of meditate my way into bliss which didn't work <laughs> by the way meditation can be very very blissful but it can also be very very painful it is a spacious practice at least the kind of meditation I was practicing and still practice it's a spacious practice wherein whereby whatever energy is arising can emerge, can be acknowledged, felt, expressed, explored, and then dissolved, released, and let go. So, you know, it's coming to places like Walmart that reminds me the importance of embodiment, of not trying to transcend or escape this reality. Yes, trying to transcend, you know, the illusion of duality, the illusion of separation, transcending self-limiting beliefs, storylines, social programming, conditioning, those kinds of things. Yes, but also working with them, using awareness to notice when those storylines emerge and to choose something different. Noticing those storylines cropping up again and again, maybe over the years, begging me to learn from it. My teacher in India said, you know, until you can let go of those storylines or those patterns of behaviors, you know, take them as your parent, take them as your, your child, take them as a, a message. So again, embody your human body. We incarnated into bodies. We're not these little floating around energy orb things that don't have form, don't have density, don't have mass. Um, I mean, we might be in another reality, but at least in this reality, we have human bodies to, so, like, be embodied, be grounded, be open and receptive to this human experience, and know that you are more, and the point is not to 
at least in my experience, not to transcend, say, the need for food, <laughs> like become a breatharian. I've tried that one before. That's not for me. It's to engage with this life, to engage with the opportunity to be in a body, to connect, to perceive, to feel, to sense, to be on the ground, to see, to hear, to touch, to smell, to taste, and, you know, notice and enjoy the aliveness of that human experience. And also cleanse yourself before and after you go to Walmart because the unseen <laughs> that is there can and will, you know, attach onto your light if you're not careful. So I hope this message today comes as encouragement wherever you are, you know, having to go about your day entering low vibe spaces or be around low vibe people, you know, shine your light, give your light, spread your joy and your love and your non-judgment as much as you can and help raise the vibe of those places, not by avoiding them at all costs, but by going into them, taking care of yourself being yourself, shining, and coming back and resuming taking care of yourself. I mean, I'm going to challenge myself and see if I can make some people smile in there and be friendly and be joyful and get excited over the California avocados or whatever else I might find in there. So that's all t for today. Like if you like, subscribe for more inspiration, information, resources, random everyday wisdom. Click the link in the description and you can get a free or buy donation copy of my book, Raw Food Ayurveda, Volume 1. It has 52, it was 45, now 52 with a bonus, uh, sweet low-fat raw vegan recipes plus tips to customize all of those and your raw food lifestyle in general according to your Ayurveda dosha. So bring in the best of the West and the East together. That's what I like, fusion. Anyway, much love to you. Talk soon. Bye.